Welcome to another video. This video is for those who don't have a full understanding of the sandwich theorem, the squeeze theorem, or the two policemen chasing a criminal theorem. I've heard such analogies before, but maybe you have an understanding, you just like watching my videos. Thanks for watching. Or maybe you've forgotten what it is. Let's go. Or maybe you don't even know what it is. You're still welcome. So this is about a limit. We're going to take a limit as x approaches zero. And this is the function. Now, because this is a finite number, or it's a number, we can plug it in. The problem is we cannot plug in zero here because x is in the denominator. So because it's in the denominator, sign is not defined at x equals zero in this case x equals i mean sine of one over x is not defined and because of that we can't do anything and if you try to use l'hopital's rule every time you take the derivative this guy is always going to be there there's no way to get rid of it so l'hopital's rule doesn't help you in this case what can we do well the video is about squeeze theorem so let's just get into it The main goal of squeeze theorem is to set this function that you're trying to take the limit of between two bounds. You want an upper bound and a lower bound. You want to say that this function will always be less than something and it will always be greater than something. And by the time you work everything out, the two ends will be the same. So we want to show that this function is always between two things. It's like the meat in the two pieces of bread. It's bread on top, bread under, bread on the right, bread on the left, and the meat is in the middle. This is the meat. The first thing to do is look at the function and ask yourself, which of these parts, now there are many parts of this function. Let's start with the x squared. Can I say I know the minimum that x squared can be? But because it is x squared, I know it's always positive. So the smallest value it can be is zero. What is the biggest value it can be? It's infinity. So it is not a finite number. I can't focus on x squared. So let's go here. What is the smallest value e to anything can be? It can be, the smallest value it can be is, we don't even know the smallest value it can be because it approaches zero but never gets to zero and it, it goes to infinity, never get, nobody gets to infinity. So E is not your best friend in this case because E does not have a minimum that is finite and does not have a maximum that is finite. This one has a minimum that is finite, it is zero because the smallest value x squared can ever be is zero. And the maximum it can be, we don't know. It's infinity. It's not a number we can plug in. So the only part you can focus on is the sign. What is the smallest value the sign of anything can be? Well, it's minus one. And what is the biggest value the sign of anything can be? It is one. So that's what you focus on. Okay, we're going to say that we know. We know that the sign of anything is always between minus 1 and 1. Once you can find a bounded function, you know the left-hand side and you know the right-hand side, both of them are finite, you can start building your sandwich. So now, this is part of the meat. So let's say this is the bacon no some people don't like bacon this is the turkey well some people don't like turkey I, this is the meat okay the first part of the meat and then you go from here you're gonna start 
adding all the other parts. So what do you think we need to add to sine 1 over x? Well, we need to add e. So make that the, some people don't like ketchup. Whatever you like, add to it. The next ingredient to your sandwich. Let's put it there. Maybe your sandwich shouldn't have ketchup. Sorry, I don't make sandwiches. Okay, so this is gonna be e to the sine one over x. So see what we're gonna do here. We're gonna expand this and say this is e to the sine of one over x is less than or equal to one. And this is, is this one? Because we raise this to, to we put e here as the base. We're gonna raise this also to power one. So this is going to be e to the power 1, and this is going to be e to the negative 1. So that whatever you do to the meat, you have to do to the sandwich. Remember, everything touches the sandwich, okay? Touches the, the bread, okay? So that's what you have. Now, you need to be careful, because sometimes when you add something to the meat, the sign changes. You have to be super careful. Now, if anything you do is incapable of changing the sign, you leave it that way. So what we have just done, raising a number to an exponential function, e to anything does not become negative, does it? No. e to the zero is positive. e to anything is positive, always positive, right? Remember the exponential graph? It is always above the x-axis. You see that? So it is always positive. So we don't need to worry about the signs in the inequality. Okay, we're good. There's one more thing. The meat is not done. We need to add x squared. And remember what I told you about x squared. x squared is always positive. Okay? The least it could be is zero, which is non-negative. So we still would not be changing what this is. So we're going to have x squared e to the sine 1 over x, like that, less than or equal to. So we we'll multiply this by x squared. We have to multiply this also by x squared. So this is going to be x squared e to the negative 1. This is x squared e to the 1. I'm just going to write it as e, since e to the 1 is just e. So here is what we have. We have our sandwich complete. So what we're saying, if I take a bite of this meat, that's the limit, is the same thing as taking a bite of the bread, is the same thing as taking a bite of this. The three of them are going into the same belly. That's why we call it the sandwich theorem. You take a bite, Everything goes into the same belly. Okay, let's do it. So let's take the bite. We're gonna say, if I take a bite, limit as x goes to zero of x squared times e is less than the limit as x goes to zero of e to the sine one over x and is less than or equal to the limit as x approaches zero of x squared e. Now let's take the limit. What is this limit? Well, remember e is a constant. So if you plug in zero, there's gonna be zero times e, which is zero. So we have zero is less than or equal to the limit as x approaches zero of e to the sine of one over x. And it's less than or equal to, if we take the limit here, it's just gonna be zero times e also, which is gonna be zero. Oh, this is e to the negative one. That was a mistake. Okay, it doesn't matter. I fixed it. Ah, I almost left that. And that's it. So, this is less than or equal to this. This is less than or equal to this. So, we're saying this can be equal to zero and can also be equal to zero. And it can be less than zero. Now, look, the reason why, this is the whole idea about sandwich theorem. We're saying, let's, there are two options. Let's assume this is less than zero. It means this is negative. And if it is negative, we're saying zero is less than it. Is it possible for a number to be negative and zero is less than that number? No. 
So the option of being less than is not possible. The other option is the option of equal to. If this is equal to zero, then zero is equal to it. That makes sense. And that's why we choose the equal to option and the less than option is never true. So we say by the squeeze theorem, the limit as x goes to zero of x squared e to the sine of one over x is equal to zero. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.